Throughout 2021, the NFT industry will have grown into a major sector of the crypto industry, with the total amount spent on purchasing NFTs exceeding $12.6 billion, up from $162.4 million at the start of the year. While Ethereum is used to create, buy, and sell most NFTs, high gas fees can make the process prohibitively expensive. According to Rarible Analytics, minting a single NFT on Ethereum costs around $98.69 in gas fees, while minting NFT collections costs around $900 on average. Many investors and creditors try to sell their NFTs on secondary marketplaces like OpenSea and pocket a profit to offset these costs. However, there are various ways to profit from NFTs other than selling them at a higher price than you paid or created them for. Today, we are showing you the best NFT tips for you to become rich as a beginner. Here, let's begin with the video. Ways to increase passive income from NFTs. Provide liquidity to earn NFTs. Because of the ongoing integrations of NFTs and DeFi infrastructures, it is now possible to provide liquidity while receiving NFTs in exchange for establishing your position in a given liquidity pool. For example, when you provide liquidity on Uniswap V3, the automated market maker will issue an ERC721 token, also known as LPNFT, indicating your share of the total amount locked in the pool. The token pair you deposited, the token symbols, and the pool's address are also etched into the NFT. You can quickly liquidate your position in liquidity pools by selling this NFT. Invest in NFTs The ability to stake NFTs is one of the advantages of the marriage of NFTs and DeFi protocols. Staking is the process of depositing, or locking away, digital assets in a DeFi protocol smart contract to generate a return. While some platforms accept a variety of NFTs, Others require you to buy native NFTs to earn staking token rewards, which are usually denominated in the platform's native utility token. In some cases, part of the rewards distributed to stakeholders may be denominated in governance tokens. These protocols give token holders the ability to vote on the future development of their ecosystems. But most of the time, coins earned from staking NFTs can be reinvested into other yield-generating protocols. NFT Royalties the underlying technology that powers NFTs enables creators to specify terms that impose royalty fees whenever their NFTs are traded on the secondary market. In other words, even after selling their creations to collectors, the creators can earn passive income. This allows them to indefinitely earn a percentage of the NFT's sales price. For example, if the royalty for a digital artwork is set at 10%, the original creator will receive 10% of the total sale price each time their artwork is resold to a new owner. It's worth noting that the creators frequently set these predetermined percentages while the NFTs are being minted. Furthermore, smart contracts, self-executing computer programs that enforce contractual agreements, govern the entire royalty distribution process. As a result, as a creator, you won't have to manually enforce your royalty terms or track payment because the process is fully automated. Adopt NFT-powered yield farming. Users can now farm for yields using NFT-powered products because NFTs are quickly becoming a core component of AMMs. Yield farming is the process of leveraging multiple DeFi protocols to generate the highest possible yield with the digital assets you have. Based on our previous example, the LP NFT tokens issued as liquidity provider tokens on Uniswap can be used as collateral or staked on other protocols to earn additional yields. Consider it a yield on top of another yield-generating protocol. This possibility opens the door to a layered income-generating model ideal for yield farmers. However, it should be noted that NFTs and the underpinning smart contract technology are still in their infancy. As a result, many of the applications offering the opportunities highlighted in this article are still in their early stages. Given this, it is prudent to conduct due diligence and understand the risks involved before implementing any strategies. Rent out NFTs Renting out your NFTs, particularly those in high demand, is one way to generate passive income. Some cards can trade games. For example, allow players to borrow NFT cards to increase their chances of winning. Smart contracts govern the terms of the deal between the two parties involved, as expected. As a result, NFT users typically have the option of determining the length of the rental agreement and the lease rate for the NFT. NFT is a prominent platform that allows users to rent or lend NFTs. This enables lenders to set maximum borrowing periods and daily rates, which average between 0.002 and 2 wrapped Ethereum. So these are the best ways you can make money with NFTs being a beginner. Stay tuned and let us know your views in the comment section below. What's going on, guys? What is going on? Hope each and every one of you guys have an awesome day. Because I know I am.
So we're actually gonna go over order blocks, guys. But really quickly, I wanted to show you pretty much what we went over Tuesday. You see this? Boom. That's your zone of entry. All the Tuesday. Boom, boom. We did the same thing with GJ too. That's your kill zone. Called it Tuesday. Boom, boom. I'm actually going to show you guys exactly how to do that. I'm going to show you guys exactly how to do that. First things first, we have to understand order blocks, guys. We got to understand. So let me clear everything out. So what, I'm going to go into what is, I'm going to give you guys everything, the whole sauce, everything you guys need. So order blocks, you guys cool with that? You guys are cool with understanding order blocks and things like that? You guys want to go over it? If not, that's fine. We could do something different. All right, bet. Yeah, I know a lot of you guys want that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Drop the nuggets. Yeah, yeah. Got you, got you, got you. All right, bet. So what is an order block? So basically, you have to understand this concept. Smart money buys to sell and sells to buy. Let me say it one more time. Smart money buys to sell and sells to buy. Basically, what that means is if they want to, if the market wants to drop, it first has to rise. So before it starts this drop, you see this candle right here? We're talking specifically on the monthly time frame. We're not going to get lower than the weekly time, than the daily time frame, guys. Keep that in mind. So what starts this whole downtrend, right? Is this right here. At the very, very top, you're going to see that bullish candle. See, now what's happening in that bullish candle is what you don't see. While everyone is buying this candle right here, right? Smart money is selling this candle. They're selling the candle, a whole bunch of sell orders in there to prepare for that bearish drop. Does that make sense, guys? Okay, so now, now that we know you pretty much buy to then sell, and sell to buy they first have to give you this bullish candle before they drop in that bullish candle you have a whole bunch of bearish sell orders so smart money is selling the heck out of that candle understand that right so what validates an order block so for let's let's do a bullish order block so your bullish order blocks are actually bearish candles weird right your bullish order blocks are actually bearish candles, right? Let's do, let's get an easy pair, man. All right, but cool. So your bullish order blocks are bearish candles. So this bearish candle before this bullish run is an order block. Does that make sense, right? So the definition pretty much is the lowest candle or price bar with a down close. Pretty much the, the, the bearish candle, right? The lowest bearish candle. You guys have that down? That lowest bearish candle, that is your order block. How is the order block validated? Pretty much when price trades and closes above that candle. Then that is confirmed and validated as an order block. Price has to trade through this candle right here. So let's actually box up this candle. Or let's put a line here and a line here. That's your order block, right? This is your order block. So how do what do we do with this information, Ty? Like, what is it? How does that? How's that going to help me? Well, being that that is a bullish order block. Next time price trades back towards this order block, you can expect rejection, right? When price trades higher and away from the bullish order block and then returns to the bullish order block, you're now bullish. You're bullish, right? That is your entry. That right there is your entry. So now your stop loss after a bullish order block is going to the safest stop is to be below. If the safest stop is below the bullish order block. 
below the bullet shorter block is your safe stop loss. And then your target is actually the top of the range. So price ranged between this order block and this high, right? Price trades back towards the order block. TP1 is way up here. The top of the range is your, is your target. That's your target right there. So now we got 19. Does this work for the monthly or any time frame? This works for any time frame. I'm just going over um, the monthly, weekly, and daily because this is gonna give you your direction. If you know the direction of the market on the monthly, weekly, and daily timeframes, you'll never ever, you have your bias. Once you have your bias, you know what direction the market's moving in, you put yourself in a winning position. You can't look at a chart and guess whether it's going up or down. So I'm gonna give you guys the bias. You guys get that? You guys got that right so your bearish candle before the start of the bullish trend is the order block while everyone's selling this candle smart money is buying this candle so this becomes an order a block of bullish orders whole bunch of bullish orders so what happens is i'm not going to write any definitions down just take notes what happens is when price trades away and then back towards the order block, you get this crazy, crazy rejection. You're bullish. Once price hits that order block, you are bullish. Stop loss below here, TP1 here. If you're being technical, you can have this as your target. Previous levels of structure can be your targets. Intermediate targets, right? But your final target, where you're looking to collapse the trade or get out, is right here. All right, so your previous levels of structure are going to be your TPs. So in this particular trade, TP1 was hit. Your entry was here, TP1 hit already. Now, once TP1 is hit, you can move your stop loss to the median threshold of the order block, the middle of that order block. Does everybody get that? Make that a little better for you guys. So these right here are your targets. This red line here is your stop loss. Once target one is hit up here, move your stop loss to 50% of the order block. Got it? He said, when you make a trade, how sure are you that the trade is going the way you want it to be? I'm telling you right now how. I'm telling you right now. We're gonna find out, We're gonna. I'm gonna show you a whole bunch of different examples. This is how smart money is trading, right? So there's your entry. Your targets, your stop loss gets moved in profit. Excuse me, not in profit. At the median threshold right here, 50%. 50%. Now, this applies to the monthly, weekly, all time frames. Now, you really want to use this on the higher time frames, the monthly, weekly, and daily. Why? Because they give you your bias. They give you your direction. Once you have your direction, it's game over. If you know where the target is, where price wants to trade towards and through, you put yourself in a winning position. You put yourself in a good, good, good position to profit in that market. I already know I lost a couple of people, so let me see where you guys are at. Is this only done on the monthly? Nope, I totally answered that. Uh, so you can easily swing this. Yeah, you can swing this. GJ is a swing. GJ is a, is a swing right there. Now look where GJ traded back, right? So it went from here to here and then retraced back. 
It went from here to here. And then retrace back. So GJ is actually at a really, really good spot to swing back towards the upside. Now, if you're, if you're using this method as your re-entry, your target is actually the negative 62. Well, we're, not, we're not even gonna get into there. We're good. We're just, let's just stick to the order box. Let's just stick to your order box. See, that's my problem. I just be getting ahead of you guys. But. All right, so there's the power of your order box. Now, in a, every, every single bullish, excuse me, bearish candle on the way up is an order block. Same way on the way down. Let me just delete all of that. Every single bearish bullish candle here on the way down is an order block. So prices in this downtrend, right? Price is coming down, price is coming down, price is coming down. Remember, they buy to sell. Buy to sell. While everyone's buying this candle, smart money is, is getting in again on the downside. While everyone's buying this candle, smart money is getting in again on the downside. So let's actually box this candle right here. Some of you guys are already connecting the dots and kind of see where this is going. Those that don't, that's fine. I'm gonna walk you guys through it. Look at that whole bunch of sell orders right here. So when price trades back towards it, when price trades back towards it, what do you think happens? You get that rejection. You get that rejection. Right? Now this applies to every single chart this is gj right now applies to everything let's try eu eu actually has a really really good example right here let's see let's do this over here let's focus on this remember what we said this bullish candle before the start of the bearish trend, the big bullish candle is the order block. So let's box it up. Box it up like Chinese takeout. Forgot where I got that from. Order block. That bullish candle is your order block right there. That is your order block right there. Everyone see that? So that means while everyone is buying that bullish candle, smart money is selling that candle. Smart money is selling that candle. They hang around in this range and then they drop. Once this closes through the bullish candle, that bullish candle is now validated as an order block. Order blocks are only validated once price trades through then so on a bearish trend that bearish candle that th that trades through the previous bullish candle right that is going to be what validates this order block right here does that make sense for everybody Don't say king. Okay. Breaker blocks are very, very similar. They just create uh, that breakout retest effect, but we're going to stick to order blocks really quickly. Right? I'm not going over pairs today. I'm going over order blocks. Order blocks, order blocks, order blocks. Pairs we can go over the last 10 minutes. So again, that's the order block. So now what do you think happens when price trades back to the order block? What do you think happens right there? Rejection. Rejection. All right, so you're bearish. And now you're selling that, and TP1 is right here. 
That's your take. That's your take profit. Why? Because it left the range. It let it leaves the order block, comes here, is the bottom of that range, comes back towards the order block. Now your target is the top of that range or the bottom of that range, excuse me, because this is a bearish trend. Bottom of that range. This is the top of the range. This is the bottom of the range. You left the order block, came back. Now your target one is back to the bottom of the range. If you took that trade, you, you saw blue in your MetaTrader 4 for one, two, three, four, five, six months, seven months. Imagine seven months no drawdown because you got in here at the top of the, at the order block. Right? And then you can even take it a step further and refine your entry on the weekly time frame. What happens on the weekly time frame that gives it away? You have an M, right? You have your M pattern right here, your double top. And on the second leg, what kind of candlestick pattern that is, is that? People call that a tweezer tops. Tweezer tops on the weekly. Right? Tweezer tops on the weekly. So that right there is your entry. As soon as you see that, your entry is the close of that candle. That's your entry right there. Your target is back down here. Just off of the order block. And we didn't get lower than the weekly. If we get into the daily and lower time frame, you can literally snipe that entry. Snipe that entry. This entry is good enough. You can get even further, refine that entry on the lower time frames. But again, on your monthly time frame, you got your direction, you got your bias. Your weekly time frame is confirming that. Now your daily time frame is also going to confirm the same thing. Confirms the same thing. Everybody see that? So now imagine you're in a bearish trend, you're selling the rallies. Meaning whenever it retraces back up, whenever it rallies back up, you're looking to get in because you are a seller. You know where your entry is and you know where your target is. This is your target down here. Let me make it a little prettier for you guys. I'm showing you guys exactly how I look at the charts, exactly how I trade. So this is the first thing I look for. This is your target. If I know, if you know that's your target, would you ever buy this market? Think about it. If you know that's your target, if you get in here, right, this is your entry. Here's your entry. If that's your entry and that's your target, are you looking to buy this market? No. Now, this doesn't mean you have to be a swing trader. Because me personally, I'm not a swing trader. I'm an intraday trader. I'm not holding my trades for, for, for like two, three weeks, four, four weeks. I'm not doing that. That's not how I am as a trader, right? I like my money in and out working for me as fast as possible, right? So I'm holding my trades one tops five days, tops. But if I know the direction, if I know the bias, I'm just getting in again and again and again. So the downside, right? I'm just getting in again and again and again and again. Does that make sense? So this applies to whatever type of trader you are. If you're not a swing trader, if you can't hold the trade for, for days and weeks, you don't have to. You can still use this. You should still use this. If you're a day trader, meaning you're, you get out before 2 p.m. Eastern New York session, that's a day trader. Day traders are, are in and out of a trade within that day. Intraday traders, they hold their trades like me between one to five, five days. Their goal is the move. They're taking it to the move. If the move doesn't happen within one to five days, they're, they're taking their profits and they're, they're looking for the next setup like me. Then you have your position traders who are holding it for this entire move. 
which happened between November, this was November of 2009, to June of 2010, about seven months. I'm not holding no trade for seven months. But for seven months, I knew the direction, I knew the target, and I'm winning for seven months straight because I know where this market is headed. I know where they have to go. Because we just bounced off of a monthly order block, guys. We just bounced off of a monthly order block. Right, we just bounced off a monthly order block. There's a whole bunch of liquidity down here. That's one of the reasons why this is a target. Whole bunch of liquidity down here, whole bunch of money down here that price wants to trade through. See this, this green line right here? Let me make it uh, black. So that black line, price wants to trade through that. Why? Because a whole bunch of money, whole bunch of liquidity right down there. Make sense for everybody? Okay, let, let me check the chat. This is lit. Since you don't swing, how do you determine the next entry on the full move down to the target? Right, so you're gonna scale in. So let me, that's a very good question. Very good question. That's one of the questions I had when I was first learning this. So because I'm not a, a position trader, you can actually get in on the order blocks, on the breakers. This is what somebody said. This is what somebody actually mentioned. The breakers on the way down. So remember, on this uptrend, right, you have a whole bunch of order blocks. The bearish candles are order blocks, right? So let's target this one in particular. Let's go ahead and target this one order block in particular, right? Let me zoom in. Let's get, let's get, let's get our hands dirty. This particular order block on the way up, right, this bearish candle, any bearish candles on the way up are order blocks. I'm gonna say it a million times. I'm gonna sound like a broken record. So let's box that up, All right? That's your order block. Let me actually, I'm boxing up this red candle right here, that bearish candle, Go top to bottom. Let's actually make that red. This is a breaker, right? This is a breaker. That just means this is gonna create that breakout retest effect on the way down. That's all it means. It's just gonna create that breakout retest effect on the way down. Now look, breakout, retest that bearish order block. Magic, right? Breakout, retest, that bearish order block. Now let's use, let's use another one. I'm not cherry picking. This applies to everything. Not cherry picking. This applies to everything, right? So another one. Let's get another one. Bearish order block. Right? That candle, right before that jump, order block. This bullet, this bearish candle right here, this bearish candle right before this bullish run, order block. So let's box it up. Let's go ahead, box that up. A little sloppy, but it's cool. All right? Let's do that. And let's do that, right? What happens? Breakout retest. So you're scaling in. So now, based off of that alone, you caught this entry here on the way down. You held it one, two, three, four, five days. I told you, I don't hold anything for more than five days. I'm waiting for my retest. I didn't trade for two days. That's cool. You're not supposed to trade every day. You got in again right here. Why? Because it entered my order block. So that's how you take advantage. So I know I'm, my target is way down here. This is my target, right? My target is way down here. That's my target. That black line is my target. So I'm literally doing that for the entire time on the way down. So these old order blocks on the way up, keep them marked because they're gonna help you on your way down. It's almost like, it's like some like stairs. Ah, so it's the, yeah, exactly, Dylan, it's the old ones. The old order blocks you used on the way up, you're gonna use on the way down. 
they're going to create that breakout retest effect. So if you're not a position trader, if you are not a position trader, like most people aren't, like most people are, they're not position traders. They're not. Nobody's holding a trade. Well, most people, I should say, because I do know a couple of position traders that are pretty freaking rich. But most traders aren't holding their trades for months. They're in and out, guys. They're in and out. One, one day, two, three days, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But you do need that monthly, weekly, and daily time frame to give you your direction. If you do not have your bias, you're lost. Any trader that tells me they don't really use the, the monthly or the weekly or whatever, and I ask them how do they get their bias, it's like a whole drawn-out explanation. But really, it's this simple. Yo, how do you get your bias? I look for order blocks. That's it. Order block. That's how I know the direction. Now, I'm going to take it to GJ. Well, let me ask you some questions first. Uh, so as an intraday trader, you're going for 20 to 50 pips max. I'm going for the move. So if the move is 20, 50 pips, I'm taking it. I'm going to tell you exactly what I mean by that. Exactly what I mean by I'm going for the move, right? So let's take a look. Can anyone identify the order block, right? Can anyone identify an order block right now? I'm, I'm really, I'm close to it right now. Close to it. Close to it, right here, boom. Right there, that's the order block. That's why we actually bought GJ. Now, something that's super cool about this one is that price poked through the order block, but it's okay, and I'm gonna tell you why. You really, really want price to wick off of it, but if it pierces it, that's fine. A dead giveaway that they're ready to reverse is going to be whether or not, let me just focus on the order block, whether or not price trades below the median threshold of the candle. This is why I, I, I marked the candle and not the wick for this specific example. All right, this is why I marked the candle and not the wick for this specific example. The median threshold is the 50% mark. That's why I got my, uh, my fibs out. So the median threshold, 50% of the order block. As long as price does not trade through there, you're still good. That's still a valid order block. So let me make that color. Um, damn, where'd my color go? Oh, there you go. All right, let's make that red because you really don't want price to go down that low. Let's make that red and let's get our box. Let's get our box up. Let's box that candle. Let's, let's, let's make our box green again, man. Green again. Let's get it. Now, this is why I just saw GJ and I started just watering at the mouth. That's free money. And you're holding it. You're going to be holding this for a minute. I'm telling you right now. So we saw GJ. Look at that. The median threshold, 50%. Price does not close below 50% of that order block. That's on the daily time frame. Let's zoom into the four hour. What do we get on the four hour? How did I know to get in here? On the four hour, what did we get? We get that bounce, we get that W. On the four hour, we get that W. How did I know price was gonna retrace and then give us another entry on the buy? Dude, just simple fibs, right? Simple fibs. Rejection off the 62. Rejection off the 62. That was your kill zone. It entered the kill zone. You got in for the buy. Your target was this high right here. Target smashed. So that'll be an easy move I took right there. So how many pips is that? Let's get the ruler out. Actually, not even. So 137.02. So 137.77. So that's 75 pips in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 hours. You were done trading by 3 o'clock today. You entered your trade about 2 in the morning, 3 in the morning. You slept in. You felt good. You woke up. 
oh, it's cool, I'm in profit, let me let it rock. Three o'clock, you're, you're out of the trade. You cost 75 pips. So me personally, I'm not really up for London the whole, the whole London session. You get your setup, you go to sleep. Me personally, I hate being up that late. I get my setup, I go to sleep. Yeah, you cover the whole body. You cover the whole body. You want another entry on GJ. So this is what you do. You just wait for another retracement. Actually, it created, so G, what GJ just did was create equal highs, right? So you're really gonna see, you're gonna expect that to run through those highs. You're going to expect GJ to run through those highs, especially because GU, the major, is about to do some shit right now. Excuse my language. GJ, the major, is, is really about to run it up. Is really about to run it up. Can you get a retracement lower? That's fine. Yeah, absolutely. But the trend is bullish. Do not, do not mistake that. The trend is bullish. How do we know the trend is bullish? Because it just broke these previous highs, these are previous highs. Previous highs, previous highs, previous highs. All violated, all violated. Previous highs, all violated. All those red lines are previous highs, violated. Damn, I gotta, I gotta delete all these lines, man. Hold up. All right, let me let me answer some questions. Um, where do you put your stop loss and take profit? Stop loss is below structure. Take profit is at the next level of structure. So very similar to our EU, right? Let me see. Let me show you. Where's EU, right? There's EU. Let's get back on the monthly time frame. Cool. So your stop loss, if you're trading like this, right? This is applies to any time frame, guys. Your stop loss is above the order block. Your take profit is at the end of the range, which is at your target right here, right? Once you're in profit, move your stop loss to the 50% of the range. Now, um, you're looking at it on the monthly, but I'm telling you, this applies to all time frames. Once you're in profit, move your stop loss to the middle of the range. Or just collapse the trade, take partials, or close the whole trade. That's your stop loss above structure. Take profit is at the next level of structure. Your entry was here, stop loss above structure, which is this order block, right? Your target, your take profit, whatever however you want to call it, is the next level of structure right here, right? This level right here. And then if it's a bigger time frame like this, you scale in on the retracements. You just scale in, that's it. How do you mark a uh, new retracement on GU? You would look on a higher time frame, my brother. Look on a higher time frame, and you, you'll see it very clearly. Does scaling in work for day traders? Absolutely. That's that's exactly what you know. I'm a I'm a day trader. I'm an intraday trader, so that's what I do. That's exactly what I do. So if I miss that entry, like I mentioned before on on our daily example, let me get back to it, guys. On our daily example, I'm I'm getting in there. That's your entry, that's your target. Entry, target. On the way down, you scale in. You just get in more. Get in more positions. Get in more sell positions. On these rallies up, these retracements, these rallies back towards your entry, you know your bias already. You know you're bearish. Just get in again for the sell. Boom. Intraday trader, this is the daily time frame. Boom. Enter the sell. TP gets hit. TP1 is typically going to be this right here. So if that green line was your entry, your TP is going to be here. TP1, TP2, down here. Let me get the crosshair out. Yeah, this is your TP right here, this level of structure. Boom, boom, trades through it. All good and dandy. Now all you're waiting, because your TP hits this day. This day is your TP hits, right? Boom, that candle closes. Now you look at your chart again the next day. Hmm, when do I get in? Well, you already know this was a previous order block. Now this becomes your breaker, right? Your breaker is the same thing, an order block that you're using for that breakout retest effect, right? That breakout retest. So you broke out, retested that breaker. Now you're getting in again on the downside. 
So that's how you would use this same method if you're a day trader, intraday trader, a scout for anything. Anything. So just keep in mind, like you just want to keep in mind where are the order blocks? Not only for your downtrend, but that previous uptrend. Not only for your uptrend, but that previous downtrend, right? Your order blocks will turn into breakers. Yes, this is recorded. Uh, let's do, uh, okay, how do you spot order blocks and not confuse them with other candles? So your order blocks are just on a, in a bullish trend, right? In a bullish trend, every bearish candle is an order block. In a bearish trend, every bullish candle is an order block. Very, real simple. Every single candle, every last one is an order block, right? I'm not going to go through each and every one of them, but the purpose is you can get wick entries on the daily time frame, basically on any time frame. You get wick entries. Like these wicks, you can get in here. You can get in here off of these order blocks over here. Every single bullish candle on a bearish trend is an order block. Then the opposite. Every single bearish candle on a bullish trend is an order block. All right, um, let's see. Yeah, you, you guys are gonna get the recording. You guys are gonna get the recording. Wherever you, you click the link to get this to get on this uh, call, I'll drop the recording. Wherever you got the link from, I'll drop the recording. About like, like 10 groups, something like that. All right, all right. S difference between the 62 and the 61.8 is about 0.2, my brother about point two. So the 62 is an institutional uh, FIB level. Institutional FIB level. So do you only use the most current order block before the move up or down? Yes. Not only that, the, the next order block too can be your target. So like in this example right here, if we broke through, if we broke this target and I'm lost and I don't know where, I don't know what's going on. Let's say if we broke through, they say, I got it for the sell. Oh, I'm lucky. It's lit. I see this M. Oh, it's lit. This M right here. Oh, we're, it's, it's great. Life, life is amazing, right? If I got in, target one is here. That's my target. That's my target right here. I sold off. Now I broke through. Where am I? I'm super, super lost. I don't know when to get in next. I don't know. You know, I don't, let's say I don't know how to use fibs. I don't know nothing. I'm going to look left. Where did it break through? Broke through this order block right here. I'm looking left. Okay, where am I at? Okay, we're here. Here, okay. Some people would use that as support. But you know better. Some people would say, oh, double bottom. Oh, it's lit. Let's buy. No, because you know that's your entry. And down here is your target. You're not ready to be a buyer yet. So when you're looking left, you're looking for order blocks or breakers, I should say. You're looking for breakers to help you get in on the way down. So you box this up. Boom. That is your breaker. That is your breaker. Just to not confuse anybody, your order blocks on the way up are going to help you on the way down. To keep it really, really simple. All right, that order block on the way up, that bearish candle is an order block on the way up. Here is a breaker. So you get that breakout retest effect, All right? That's, that's your reason, that's your, you know, confluence number one, confluence number two, that's a more, that's an evening star on the daily. Daily time frame. that is your evening star. Does that make sense, guys? That makes sense? All right, cool. Let's do another example. How else would I get in? Let's use another order block. Let's use this one, this, this red one. This red one before this bullish move. Let's clear that out. Let's clear that out. So this red one, this red candle, right? This red candle before this bullish move is an order block. 
While everyone's selling that, smart money is buying. Now let's box that one up. Let's see if what Ty is saying really makes sense. Let's check it out. Let's move that back. Let's move that forward. There's your breaker. So what happens? 